Its 16-foot-wide crater slowly fills with water and begins to overflow about one hour prior to an eruption. Boiling in the pool intensifies, and small surges indicate the eruption is near. The pool becomes quiet. Suddenly, water explodes into the sky. For the next 50 to 60 minutes, Great Fountain puts on a show that's one of the best in all of Yellowstone. Most bursts reach heights of 50 feet, with some reaching more than 150 feet. An occasional superburst can reach heights of 200 feet. Nearby is White Dome Geyser. Its intervals are very irregular. Over the years, mineral deposits have restricted its vent to just a few inches wide, resulting in a narrow jet of water. Pink Cone Geyser sits on the edge of Firehole Lake Drive. The perfectly shaped cone gets its color not from bacteria, but from various minerals. Pink cone's activity increased greatly after the 59 earthquake. Previously, it had intervals as long as 50 hours. Immediately after the quake, intervals were less than 50 minutes. Over the years, its intervals have slowly increased again to around 16 hours or more, with eruptions lasting two to two and a half hours. The Firehole and Hot Lake group is dominated by Steady Geyser. As its name suggests, Steady has erupted almost continuously since its discovery. Next, we enter one of the most fascinating areas in all of Yellowstone, the fountain paint pots. This area was also affected by the 59 quake. Activity increased here so much that a boardwalk and parking lot had to be removed to accommodate the expansion. for which the area is named, plays often, but due to its connection with a number of other geysers in the area, its intervals are difficult to predict. On a warm summer afternoon, the fountain displays the characteristics of a classic fountain-type geyser. If your visit is on a cool morning, the water display is obscured by billowing steam clouds. Jet geyser is closely related to fountain. Jet is likely to have several eruptions during fountain's duration. Water is jetted from at least six different vents, the central burst reaching heights of 20 feet. Clepsydra geyser is named for a mythical Greek water clock. For years during the 1800s, it erupted at intervals of almost exactly three minutes. After the 59 earthquake, Clepsydra entered what's referred to as a wild phase, erupting almost continuously. Through the years since, it cycled chaotically in and out of wild phases. A number of geyser basins lie within Yellowstone's immense backcountry. These are quieter areas off the beaten track. Some require overnight trips to visit. Others can be reached by short hikes. Lone Star is a pleasant and popular three-mile hike up the Firehole River. This is one of the largest cones in Yellowstone, rising to around 10 feet in height. Eruptions occur about every three hours, reaching heights of 30 to 45 feet. 
During the latter part of play, water gives way to a steam phase. Rangers lead hikes into this isolated area during the summer months. There are no developed walkways here, and the terrain can be extremely fragile and dangerous. Most of this area lies within an oval valley that formed during a large hydrothermal explosion about 10,000 years ago. Energy released during this steam explosion was equivalent to thousands of tons of TNT. One of the most intriguing thermal features is mound geyser. Eruptions consist of a series of heavy surges. Near Gibbon Meadows, a more strenuous trail takes you high above the valley floor. Monument Geyser Basin is a small collection of uniquely shaped features. From the south end of Gibbon Meadows, a pleasant hike leads to artists' paint pots. The trail is well maintained and passes a number of small and colorful springs. themselves sit on top of a small hill, isolated from the other springs of the area. Further to the north is Norris Geyser Basin, named for an early park superintendent. In comparison, the landscape here is stark, quite different from the geyserite-covered areas of the old Faithful region. One of the differences is the presence of acidic water. This is unusual in a geyser basin and gives Norris a unique appearance. Water temperatures are much higher here and geyser activity more vigorous. Areas of the surface here pulsate from the pressure of steam and boiling water beneath it. Norris is the oldest of Yellowstone's geyser basins. Except for the time buried during the Ice Age, Hot springs have flowed here for more than 100,000 years. Norris is divided into two separate sections. The back basin is characterized by its forest-like setting. Porcelain basin is barren, almost totally devoid of plant life. The milky coloration of the pools here is due to a saturation of opalescent silica and clay minerals. The scene before you is in a state of constant change. Steam explosions create new springs. Some may last weeks or longer, others only a few hours. Some of the larger geysers have survived over the years, but are never quite the same from one year to the next. After years of being dormant, Whirligig Geyser became active again in the summer of 1974. This geyser is probably more captivating for the sound it makes. Listen as the vents play out. In Back Basin, beautiful Emerald Spring combines the blue of its clear water with the yellow of its sulfur-coated bottom. Its temperature is usually within five degrees of boiling. 